from the thought, bring it on. Bring it on. Let us pray. Not my will, but your will be done. Not my sermon, God, but your sermon preached to and through me. Make me nothing till you become everything. So that the words of my mouth, yet the meditation of all our hearts, will be acceptable in thy sight. God, you are a strength and our holy redeemer. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Mumbles, breathless, prune face, flathead, little face. These are the character names of the Dick Tracy entourage. We call them nicknames that usually kind of match up with something characteristics or personality of the person. Nicknames are things that I grew up with a long time ago. You can go down my family line and see how prevalent nicknames were. There's Poopy and there's Buttercup. There's VC, there's Dean the Bean. There's Dick Seeger. And then I was called Piggy or Big Time because I was bigger than a clock. And even in church, I, I nicknamed some of my good members. Felice is Felie. Erica is EDO. Reverend O'Brien is OB and Reverend Brooks is KB. Tim Gillespie is Big Head. <laughs> I just inserted that to mess with him. <laughs> but nicknames are a common place where I come from. But there's one nickname that uh, Interesting enough, I ran across twice on two different people. One was a friend and the other was an acquaintance. You may have heard this name in your passing. That, that name is Poochie. Poochie, my friend, and Poochie, my acquaintance, were roads apart, but they did have a common characteristic. They were not afraid of a good fight. They would scrap at a heartbeat. Now, Poochie, my friend, told a story that was hard to believe because he doesn't mind fighting. He won't start it, but he will get in it. And so Poochie tells the story that uh, they were getting ready to have a good fisticuff. And um, so Poochie, in his uh, scrappy way, invited the brother to step outside. And Poochie said the man came up to him and said, look, I don't know who you are, brother. He said, I don't mind stepping outside, but I need to tell you, once we get out there, I'm going to tear you apart. And he said, and I'm, and, and I'm just trying to warn you. Poochie, my friend, did something I would never imagine. Poochie said he looked at his face and saw his calm demeanor and shook his hand and said, thank you so much. I think I'll sit this one out. <laughs> Then there was my acquaintance, Poochie Campbell. Now, Poochie Campbell was a motor mouth, just never stopped talking, always talking smack. He was hard as nails. He was short, stocky, and cocky. But he was friendly, but he was just mildly. Now, this Poochie, my acquaintance, I knew him because he played on my father's ball team. And so one evening, uh, their team was not playing, but we always would go up on Mississippi Avenue and watch them play because that's the league he played in. And so he goes in and the team that's playing, like I'll never forget the ball, the man at, at bat was named Butch. Butch was a tall, lanky guy. We call him Pretty Boy because he thought he was cute. And um, Poochie was behind the backstop talking smack because he didn't play. Well, the game was on the line. It was the ninth inning apparently and two outs and Butch at plate. Butch hit would either extended the game by tying the game or he could have brought in a winning run. But Poochie wouldn't shut up. And Poochie just kept talking smack to, uh, to Butch, and Butch talked smack back. Come to find out, Poochie talked enough smack that Butch struck out. True story here. And so Butch had made a promise as he was walking off the field, what he going to do to Poochie? So Poochie decided that he wasn't going to be a bother with that because Poochie was just being a sportsman and liked to play the game. So Poochie goes up on Mississippi Avenue, they had a little hill. And, and, and on the top of the hill was a sidewalk, but Poochie didn't sit on the sidewalk. He sat about 10 feet down from the hill. 
And he's just sitting there playing, you know, just playing with the dirt, and messing around, being cool, not saying nothing. Here come Butch. So Butch goes up on the sidewalk. So Butch is now standing above Poochie, who's sitting down with his back turned, and, and Butch is telling Poochie what he's going to do to him. And so he's calling uh, Poochie all kind of names that I can't repeat for you here, but if you meet me outside, I'll tell them to you. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. I'm telling y'all a true story. So Poochie, Poochie's just sitting there with his back turned. So my father and I was at the game. I'm a little boy, so I, I have to have a ride. I always hung out with my daddy because we like looking at fast pitch softball. So me and my father get on the heel, and we hear Butch looking down on Poochie, talking. Poochie got his back turned, and Poochie's still playing in the dirt. And for the first time, Poochie's not saying nothing. We thought this is strange. Man yelling in his ear, calling him names, going to tell him what he's going to do with him. So my father said to him, because that's his player, my father said, come on, Poochie, let's go. Poochie did something that I didn't think he would do. In a calm man of voice, Poochie said, Mr. Clyde, I'm all right. They call my father Mr. Clyde. Mr. Clyde, I'm all right. I'm just going to sit here. And so finally, Poochie was sitting there. My father and I were sitting there watching, make sure everything going to be all right. And Butch must have said one thing too many. Poochie stood up. And when he stood up, because Butch was already taller and he was on the mountain, he looked like David and Goliath. And Poochie said something I, never, I, I just, just, I can't forget. He looked at Butch and he said, I tell you what. I'm tired of talking, so if you want to throw it down, bring it on. <laughs> I took two steps back. My father moved back, and Poochie just stood there, looking up. Bring it on. Butch walks away. Well, y'all said, "What does it have to?" Do? Because when you get the palm Sunday. Isaiah gives a, a, a vision and the first com, configuration of Jesus going in to Jerusalem. And Jesus knows it's a battle. But as he speaks to God through Isaiah, I hear Jesus telling the world, bring it on. <laughs> he, he, he said, come on with it. Because you, 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 you need to understand the God we serve ain't no wimp. That, that, that the God that we celebrate, he ain't scared of a good fight. Because we paint Jesus as if he's some kind of wimpy savior. No, bring it on, he says. He is a mighty God that we serve. And I don't know if y'all know what that means when you say, I serve a mighty God. That means whatever strength comes against you, he's stronger. Whatever problem you have to confront, he's the answer. Whatever sickness you encounter, he can heal it. Bring it on, he says. Isaiah said, and so he, he lays it down. He says, he says, when I go into Jerusalem, he says, the first group I want to encounter are the hopeless people. Bring on the weary, he says. Weary people. Who are the weary people? Prophecy is interesting because it's prophetic in his future, but it's also present in his words. So when he says, he says, he, he says in the word, he says, he says that God has given me a word to sustain the weary, the hopeless ones. Who are the hopeless people? They are the ones who at the time of need are in exile. They are held captive against their will and they can't get out and they can't fight. These are the people that you cannot say it enough that you don't forget. These are the people that are so hopeless they can't sing God's praises in the strange land. You ever been that play where you've been so hopeless and so helpless? You said you have faith, but now you can't even get a good prayer in. You can't throw your hands up for a good praise. You so weighed down and so worried and so, so weak that you can't even turn to God. Some people can't even come to church some Sunday, can't even go to worship because they feel hopeless and helpless. This is who he's talking to. He, the prophecy is that I'm talking to the people presently who will be in exile when they hear this word. But I'm also talking to the people who are standing by the roadside in Jerusalem and they're hollering Hosanna, which means save now because I need some help. But he's also prophesying to you and I who said it in a life of reality. And we're feeling hopeless and helpless and drawn down and feel like we can't get any help nowhere. 
And he says this, he says, but the Lord says, bring it on, bring your troubles, cast your cares upon me. He says, he's given me something that I can give hope to the weary. And this is what he said, he gave me a word. Uh, I'm going to preach better than y'all going to respond, but I really don't care today. He says, give me a word. Let me tell you something. I went to a conference this weekend. And let me tell you, let me tell you that, that the essence of, of what I'm concerned about when it comes to church folk and even Christians. He says, see, see, I think that when you have a relationship with God and the preacher says to you, he brings hope with a word. People who have a relationship should already be in a frenzy. Now, 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 let me explain it to you. But I saw the church in motion as I went to a conference. I'll never forget this. We went to the conference. I told my wife, because my wife, I call my wife church lady, because she got church lady down pat. You know, the mint in the pocketbook, the hands over the thing, that you driving too fast mentality. They, they got that church lady thing. So anyway, so, so they, they're at this conference, and they're talking about the issues of the United Methodist Church. Every issue you can think of, they're talking about racism, sexism, and, 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 and sexual orientation. They're they just going at him. And so they were taking questions. This is a true story. They're taking questions. And, and so they got down to the last point. And um, little old mother of the, uh, of the church, I call her little old mom because she was, looked like she was the oldest one at the conference. Although all of us were old, but she was the oldest. And, and she stands up after the last question. And, and she says to them, and, and the lady that's on the, leading the platform looks at the little old lady in respect and says, you have a question? She said, no. I got a statement. <laughs> and and the, the, the God's my witness. I sit there and the place was packed. She says, I, I, I hear you all discussing your problems. And I hear you debating and arguing about your concern. I don't understand why you're arguing. You know the answer. Jesus. Y'all yeah. missed it. He, she, he said, he, she, she, they, she said, he gave you the word, Jesus. And the people in the conference act just like you did. When they heard Jesus, they didn't say a mumbling thing because we forget that we have a word in time of hopelessness. You may not be able to quote the scripture. You may not say no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But if you say Jesus, that's all you need. You may not be able to say in sickness, by his stripes I am here. But bring it on and give them Jesus. He said, let the hopeless come on. Because God has given me a word to sustain the weary, the ones that are helpless, and just call the name Jesus, and he will show up. I know that's right. Then he goes on, he says, he said, bring them on. Bring on my weary first. He said, then if you want, you can bring on my haters. You know, God has some haters. He was crucified. Which means you and I got him too. <laughs> now, now, watch what he does with his haters. Now, let me tell you something about haters. Haters set out to hurt you and harm you. And, 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 and I, have a, I don't like to call, call us devils. I'm going to say it again. I don't like to call us devils. But if we can be transparent, we may have some devil tendencies. Because the devil comes to hurt and harm and makes him haters. And, 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 and the Lord says, bring on my haters. I ain't scared of y'all. <laughs> you know why I'm laughing? Because I don't know what y'all thinking right now, but y'all might be hating me. Y'all like it. But bring on my haters. Bring the, uh, so, so I have two stories I want to tell you because you know I like to tell stories, especially at 10.30 because y'all the storytelling group. <laughs> and, and, and so, so let, 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 me, let, let me tell this story. I'm going to tell this story because I got validation because sometimes I know y'all thinking, he making that stuff up. I'm going to be making up no stories. I live this life. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you what I told Reverend Mason. Reverend Mason called me the other day, other day and we were having a conversation. And I was telling Reverend Mason um, about haters in the church. 
And it, it didn't come out as that title, but it came out as that example. Haters are the people who, 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 who will leave you to hurt you, will desert you in your greatest time of need to harm the church. And hopefully people are mature enough to know that God always keeps a ram in the bush that if you leave, somebody else will come. Because they don't hate you, they really hate God. So I don't worry about my haters anymore. But let me talk about it because we have a tendency to have devil tendencies. <laughs> so, so I was telling him about a colleague of mine called me years ago. Almost sound like he was in tears. He said to me, he said, uh, I said, what was wrong? I'll make sure I don't call his name. I don't like put people out like that, that I didn't get permission for to tell the story. He said, what's wrong? I said, what's wrong? He said, man, my greatest member left. I said, okay, that's not news. He said, no, this person who left me was the greatest contributor. He was the member I confided in when I was broken down. He was the one that I called reliable and dependable. He was the one that I said I can go into the foxhole with and go into battle because he would never leave me. He said, and this brother who I felt the church kept, kept was able to stand when I wasn't there, called me and quit. And he says, I don't know what to do about it. And, and, and he said, and the reason why he quit, because he was mad at me. I said, well, what did you do? He said, I did nothing but disagree with him. And when things didn't go his way, this is what he did. He said, I know how to get you. Because that's the mentality of a hater. That I'll, I'll leave you and the church. Why? Because you depend on me to keep it upright and, don't real, and didn't realize it was God. He said, and I don't know what to do. I said, you keep on preaching. He said, but what am I to do with him? I said, I'll tell you what you do. Now that you know he's a hater. I said, if he presents the opportunity that you can speak again. When you speak again, this is what you see. And this is what you'll say. Miss you. You were valuable to us. And I never got a chance to thank you for all the service you gave. He said, and I understand that you left me. That's what he's going to say to him. He said, but let me tell you this. Even though you left us, know that you always got a pastor and a church home here with us. I said, but when you say it, mean it. That's what Jesus said. Jesus says, when my haters came, y'all didn't see it there. He said, they didn't have to snatch my back. I turned and gave them a back to whip. They didn't have to smooth my face. I gave them my face to smack. I didn't duck when they spit. I took on the spit because my mission is bring it on because I'm going to show you the power of love. Dr. King said it this way. Hate cannot rule out hate, but love can. And this text says you can't fight fire with fire because all you going to do is get a bigger fire but if you sprinkle some love on that hate he said you can put that thing out he said bring it on and I'm going to show you what love can do next week we'll start talking about the blood that reaches to the lowest valley but this week is about the love that will climb the highest mountain what can take away all my sins God's love Bring it on, because love can run the hell out of anybody. Woo. He says, uh, bring it on, that Palm Sunday. Bring on my hopeless people, people who physically can't fight, emotionally confused, and spiritually empty. Bring them on. 
bring, bring on my haters. Those who don't have a vision to see that God he is God. Who would rather hurt me than worship me. Who would rather spit on me than sing praises unto me. Bring them on. He said, and thirdly, this is for my young people. Y'all help me. Bring on the harassers. For just in case you don't know, and I'll go back and get it to you. The haters were the Roman soldiers. But the harassers in this text would be the Pharisees and the Sanhedrins. They, they, were, the, they, they, they were the law folk. He said, bring them on. And um, I'm ready for them. So while I was away, I had a chance to, I told him this morning, I had a chance to sit and meet my, talk to my nephews. And my nephew gave me um, an education on rap music. He introduced me to a guy. Now, if I'm wrong, y'all know I ain't good at this. I'm going to try this. Is it Big Crip? Big Crip? Crip. Big Crip. No Big Chris? Crip. Big Crit, bury me in gold. Is that it? Well, Big Crit wrote a rap, bury me in gold. And he let me listen to rap. I don't like rap. I just, just, just ain't rapping to me. But he said that's the theology for his generation. So I'm sitting there listening to Big Crit. <laughs> and Big Crit cussing a little bit. A lot of N-words. And he listening, so I'm the pastor, so I got, you know, I, I get into it. I'm thinking, Lord, crit, you, you got something going on here. So at the, and then at the end, he talking about something about burn me in gold. So he says to me, he says, that's, that's, that's theology. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, Big Crit was trying to tell his, his, his audience, you can have all the money in the world. You can be buried in gold. But they at the end of the day, your life may not matter. The scripture says, what good is it to gain the world and lose your soul? I said, wait a minute. So I had to go back and do me some work on this stuff. So I, when I went to my barber, I realized why I don't really like rap music. Because they air the music that I don't, I don't want to hear. So the whole time I'm in the barbershop, he's a young guy, nice guy, tattoos everywhere, pants down to his butt, whatever you call it. You know, really, he really, I'm just true, but he, cuts, he cut, does pretty good with cutting my hair. But I'm sitting there, I had to sit there for about 10 minutes, all I hear is cussing in words, you know, B words, and, and, and they sit there and they playing with their phone like no cussing going on around. I can't, I'm trying to play my phone, all I hear is cussing. I said, no, I don't like it. But then I had to catch myself. I said, but they told me this was, a, this was theology for a young generation. So I went back and did some work. And I realized that maybe church folk don't like rap music because it's the one music that was not birthed in the church. It came right from the street. You can listen to gospel music and connect it with jazz, R&B, rhythm and blues, whatever. But rap music came out of the street. And if we had just put the words to the side, they had been talking about oppression for black communities a long time. That the rap artists, and what happened was, social media came up and they began to show us images of what rappers were telling us a long time ago. And they were really telling the church, this is our problem and this is how we related, this is how we communicated. These people are harassing us. Tupac in one of his lines, if I can remember, you know I'm not good at this. He says the penitentiary is black, packed, and they're all black. Did I say it right? And then here comes uh, Lil Wayne after Katrina. He said they left us on the roof. In other words, they in the street was telling the suburban night Christian. That while you sitting down in your cushion pews, justice ain't just for us. That, that, that's what they were saying. They, and Jesus said, bring injustice down front to me.
because that is what Jesus is about. We call it social justice. Jesus said, I've come that the oppressed don't have to be oppressed no more. I'm coming and bring it on because I'm going to show the rich how to bless the poor and the powerful to lift up the weak. He says, I've come that the Me Too will get a movement but also be heard. I've come that black lives will matter. I've come that the hurt will find healing. He says, I've come that police brutality will be brought to the front. I've come so that that which tries to hurt you, I'm going to find a way to bless you. Bring it on. And when he went into Jerusalem, that was the passion that drove him. He said, I got to go. Because if I don't go, hope dies. If I don't go, evil wins. And if I don't go, there will never be any justice. And this is what he says to him. He says, in the middle of all those verses twice, how do you go and fight a battle and you look like David in the world, your Goliath? This is how he went. The prophet says, he says, the Lord is my help. I'm done. That's what Palm Sunday is really about. The Lord is now our help. Let me see if I can. So, 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 so let, me, let me break it down to you this way. Remember when Poochie was ready to fight? The, the Poochie that told him, bring it on. Y'all remember Poochie? Remember I told you my father said to Poochie, come on Poochie, let's go. And, and, and Poochie said, no, Mr. Clyde, I'm all right. Well, when me and my father got into the car, I said to my father, were you afraid that Poochie was going to get beat up? And this is what he said. He said, no, I wasn't afraid. I knew Poochie was going to beat him. He said, but I also knew that Butch had a whole ball team. And it was just us. <laughs> and see, I, ain't, I forgot about the ball team because this was my, he said, this I do know. When Poochie started bending Butch over, he had an entourage of a ball team that would have taken all of us out. Y'all ain't got it yet. Well, as Christians, this is what the Lord is saying on Palm Sunday. I don't care what life brings your way, but the Lord, if he's your help, he's more than the world. Y'all ain't got it yet. So I ain't scared of nobody, but I'm bringing on because the songwriter said this way, be not dismayed. Whatever betides you, the Lord will take care of you. God is my help. Talk to me, Jesus. He said, my father will help me up a hill. My father will help me take the nails. My father will help me speak words of hope. My father will let me die in dignity. My father will let me rest in the grave. But early Sunday morning, my father will call me up to victory. Bring it on, because the God that helped Jesus is now the Jesus that helps you. This is why Palm Sunday is Victory Sunday because we face nothing alone. God is our help. Next time you're in trouble, you don't have to do a long prayer. Three words. Help me, Lord. <laughs> we, we used to sing a song. Uh, when my friends walk away, he said. He hollered, he echoed, help me, Lord. When the doctor shake his head, help me, Lord. When I don't have two nickels to rub together to make a dime, help me, Lord. 
when my enemies gather all around me help me Lord when the mortgage and rent is due and my pockets are broken and I ain't got a dime help me Lord when I find myself in the midnight hour darkness all around me hopeless and helpless help me Lord when I can't do nothing but breathe but I need a life to live help me Lord and that's what he says he said no matter what you face in life Palm Sunday is our reminder that we have a God that can help us in every situation. Help me, Lord. So stop being a coward, us. How you gonna run from a challenge when you got the greatest help in creation? How, how you gonna wimp out when the battles ain't, ain't yours? And how are you going to come on Palm Sunday and not remember the battle that's already been won and not shout praises of victory? Hosanna, save now. Give the Lord a hand praise. Thank God for the victory. You ain't getting hit by yourself today. The Lord helped wake you up. The Lord help bring you this far. The Lord is your help right now. Go on and just say, oh, y'all should wait a minute now. It's, it's Palm Sunday. Don't give him one of these. Go on and give him a standing ovation. He's been so good that he deserves a great and good praise. Don't move. Y'all stay right there because I'm going to tell you what I, you know, you can't do one and not do the other. I'm an equal opportunity pastor. So I told the people, don't y'all get mad at me, but I told the people at 8 o'clock, because it got good to me then, I said he deserves a stand ovation. Please don't get offended. And there were some people that were sitting. And I said to myself, now after y'all do the praise, I got to tell everybody stand up. So if you had just done it the first time, you have been up now, but now I got to waste my air to tell you, will you please stand to your feet? Because the doors of the church are open. So those of you who are sitting, now you might stand. And while you